that has always endeared me to Marx and to Marxism. This notion that labor cannot free itself in the white skin when in the black it is branded. That was such a fundamental understanding of the history of the United States. And yet it is a, it is a factor that the left in the United States keeps missing. There is no possibility for white labor to liberate itself, or to put it in a different way, there is no possibility for labor to liberate itself in the absence of understanding and dealing with the question of race. The term black Marxism can mean many different things, including the title of the famous book by Cedric Robinson, and it can mean uh, the black contribution of Marxism, uh, that there was no abstract capitalism onto which were added other things. There was a capitalism which from its inception was global and from its inception was colonial, that there would have been no development of capitalism outside of the slave trade and the colonization of the Western Hemisphere. And it gets us away from the notion that race or the African experience can be looked at in isolation from other things that are happening around this planet and to other oppressed people. It shows certain commonalities, but it also, um, particularly, for example, on the issue of race and what has been always called the national and colonial questions, you had, I believe, a profound influence on Marxism from Africa, from Latin America, and from Asia. What, what has always irritated me in the black freedom movement, is that whenever I encounter someone who says, well, Marxism is a white man's theory, and, and that's like absurd. Because when you look at the contributions that have been made to Marxism by people of African descent, it's just simply amazing. I look at Marxism as a theory of emancipation. It is a, it is a uh, a framework for analyzing history, analyzing society, and a, a method of thinking. Now, one of the problems that we faced was the rise of postmodernism, which I would argue is a, uh, has been a cancer in the left um, and has taken people, beginning with, in some ways, accurate critiques of economic determinism in Marxism. It then has taken people in this direction of almost romanticizing defeat. But what I am saying is that theories have to be revolutionized. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! What I think is really incumbent upon those of us who are veteran activists and theoreticians, is to encourage the understanding of the unity of theory and practice. That's what we've got to be doing. And for many years, there's been a, um, a dismissal of organization. You know, it's, a, it's the, almost the idea that activism is self-assertion as opposed to what we need to be doing is building organizations to transform reality. And I have great confidence that there'll be more and more younger people that will do it. Many of us thought of Marxism and Marxism-Leninism and Maoism, etc. Thought about it almost as a blueprint. And as a result, made tremendous mistakes. Uh, in some cases around the world, people made mistakes that cost all kinds of lives. Uh, what we, those that really were the most advanced were the ones that understood there are no blueprints. There's a method. You know, uh, truth always begins in the minority. That doesn't mean the minority is always right. <laughs> but truth begins in the minority, and it, and it begins usually when it's calling into question something that's uh, treated as um, established, established order. And that is as true in Marxism as it is in other things. That that we have to understand that 
there have to be revolutions in theory. Theories change, you have to critically look at them and decide, does this make sense? Does this any longer apply? And um, that's the, the, one of the main lessons I'd say to younger folks, because I think that the, the framework, you can't beat it. Thank you.